Okay, Cody, the videographer, has been forced to move out of town by bizarre exigencies. We are back to the Mickey Mouse headset. And this is, you want to know why? Ask how. Howard? The Humongous. Nicholas Lane in St. Louis asks if climate change is going to wipe us out and wipe out every other species on planet Earth. And the answer may shock you. We are going to survive, but only if we have our wits about us, because we don't really understand the nature of climate change. And here's where we're going wrong. We think Mother Nature is sweet, nice, and gentle, and that she provides a never-ending Garden of Eden with lots of greenery for bunny rabbits and forests for deer. But that is not Mother Nature's nature. Climate change does not just come from smokestacks and automobile exhaust. Climate change is Mother Nature's own malady or it's Mother Nature's own invention, depending on how you look at things. Since we fashioned our first stone tools 2.5 million years ago, there have been 60 ice ages, 60 glaciations. In one relatively short period of a few hundred thousand years, there were 20 global warmings, and they made today's global warming look Mickey Mouse, minuscule, tiny, microscopic by comparison. Temperatures went up as much as 10 degrees in 20 years. And guess who rode over the tops of all of those climate changes? As if they were waves and the species that was mounting them were surfers. Human beings. We seemed to love these things. Most of the primates, most of the great apes, most of the chimpanzees stayed home in Africa and tried to huddle in their traditional environments. Humans were a bizarre species. We were wanderers and we took on the ice ages nose to nose and face to face. We traveled north. We traveled across the Middle East on up to Europe and Asia, and many of us lived the richest lives of all where, on what scientists call periglacial territories, the very edges of the ice sheets. We learned to hunt the big mammals, elk, reindeer, that pass by in vast migratory herds. We made our life on climate change. And in the process, we developed not just our human brains, we developed much of our modern human culture. Most of human culture was developed in Africa first. Things like jewelry and makeup were developed 280,000 years ago, 180,000 years before we became modern humans. But the kind of big scale social integration that makes Western society and Chinese society big scale societies, unique, that saw its beginnings on the very edges of the ice sheets. Where are the current people warning us against climate change getting things wrong? They forget those ice ages. They forget that once upon a time, roughly 550 to 650 million years ago, this place was an ice ball. There, some think that the ice was nearly a mile thick on the entire face of this planet. The, this is Mother Nature's way, massive, 
overwhelming climate change. Why? Because we live on a tiny pill of rock that is circling a middle-sized yellow sun. And that middle-sized yellow sun is circling the core of the galaxy roughly once every 235 million years. It is on a trip that would freeze the blood of Frodo the Hobbit. It goes through the spiral arms of galaxies, undergoes assaults of cosmic rays that are beyond belief and change our climate dramatically. Every year, even in a good year, we gather something like 100 tons um, of cosmic dust in our atmosphere. But periodically, we go traveling in our 235 million year swing around the center of the galaxy. We travel through something called, that astronomers call, galactic fluff, giant clouds of space dust. And that dust accumulates just above our atmosphere and does appalling things to our climate. The mistake that the climate modelers and the climate change warners, extremists, alarmists, are alarming us about, and very validly so. Look what's just happened in the Philippines. An entire city disappeared. That's nature's climate change. And they are trying to tell us that if we remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and other greenhouse gases, like methane, everything will be fine. Everything will be hunky-dory, because we will be appeasing Mother Nature by sacrificing our modern technologies. But they are wrong. What about ice ages? What about the fact that all those ice ages and global warmings, the 60 ice ages, and dozen or more global warmings that have happened again since we fashioned our first stone tools? What about the fact that those came before there were modern technologies, before there were industrial consumerist societies? We are making a mistake. It's a mistake that was pointed out by the author of Catch-22. In Catch-22, the hero is in a bomber flying over France, and the bomber is hit by flak. There is a plastic bubble, a clear, transparent bubble in the back where a gunner sits, and the gunner radios to the cockpit that he's been hit and desperately needs help. Yossarian, the protagonist of Catch-22, goes back to help him. He sees that the man's leg has been torn off by the flak. He knows that if he doesn't do something fast, that man will die um, of loss of blood. He takes out his first aid kit. He works frantically to solve the problem with the leg. He works and works and works until finally he sees a sign of relief, coagulation, which means that the blood flow will stop. Meanwhile, the hit drummer, the wounded, the wounded gunner, is saying, please, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold, help me. Eusarian breathes a sigh of relief when he sees that coagulation. And two minutes later, the man dies in his arms. Why? Because when Eusarian opens the flak suit the man is wearing, he sees that the major problem has not been the missing leg. The major problem has been that the man's guts have been torn open, and they are literally spilling out of his body. That's where the real loss of blood is coming from. Let's not try to tuck away all of our greenhouse gases, our carbon dioxide and methane, and make the Osirian mistake, the Catch-22 mistake. Huge climate changes are inevitable on this planet. We have learned to live with them in the past. We can learn to live with them in the future if we pay attention not just to carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, but we pay attention to several facts. First, ice ages are just as likely to come as global warmings. And second, everything that was once at the bottom of a sea ends up at the top of a mountain. Everything that was once on a seashore ends up either at the top of a mountain or the bottom of a marsh. We know that from paleontology and geology, and we are forgetting it. And the vast majority of us live within a 100 miles of a seacoast. 
we have to learn how to make our cities immune to flood or to a rise. Uh, how do we do that? We have oil platforms offshore that right now house up to 350 men and tons of equipment, and they are proof against every kind of storm that happens. Someday, we will have to do what Genghis Khan did. Genghis Khan and his Mongol hordes had a capital with 10,000 people, but all of the buildings were on carts, and the entire capital could be moved from one location to another. Don't make the mistake of focusing only on tailpipes and smokestacks when the ice ages are about to hit you from behind. This is Howard the Humongous, Howard Bloom, speaking to you from the future that it's your job and my job to make. I'm looking for the author.